Hi there, I'm Nick Wood. I've put together a series of videos to try to help you to get the most from your camera. Whether or not you're a complete beginner or you're trying to forge your career in photography, either way, I can help you out. The question I'm trying to answer today is, what's wrong with fully automatic? It's one of those questions I get asked all the time, especially by new photographers, many of which know you shouldn't be using fully automatic, they're just not sure why. So let's try and answer the question of what's wrong with it exactly, what can you do about it, and what might be a slightly better mode to shoot in. Okay, first things first, fully automatic on your camera. If you've got a camera, whether or not it's a great big digital SLR like this one, you've probably got one of these round dials on it that allows you to choose different shooting modes. It may say fully automatic on it, or it may have, in this example, a green square. If you've got a small compact camera, you've probably got the same thing. On this one here, we've got a fully automatic mode. To get off it, I actually have to go into the menu option. But by default, chances are this is in fully automatic. Now, fully automatic's probably been causing you more problems than you're aware of. There are three big issues with using fully automatic. Let me explain them to you. Number one, when you're shooting fully automatic, most of your camera's key features are turned off and you don't have any access to them. If you don't believe me, let me show you. On the back of this camera here, I don't know if you can see it, hopefully you can, but most of the key controls are actually turned off. They're very dark. Yeah, there's only a few controls that are illuminated at this stage. Okay, now, if I wanna try and take control of the camera and get more out of it, I start pressing some buttons, I start getting a message. Let me read that to you if you can't see it. This function is not selectable in the current shooting mode. Okay, it's basically telling me to go away. I've put it in fully automatic. It now wants to know why I'm trying to uh, get too involved with it. Let's try a different button. Um, let's try this one up here. There you go. Press that button. Same result. This function is not selectable in the current shooting mode. Okay, there you have it. Most of your key controls in fully automatic on most brands of camera, that is, are turned off. You can't do a lot about it. Okay, problem number two. Now, chances are your camera may have a built-in flash or one of those flashes that just pops up and down every now and then. If you look at the results of that, they're often terrible. As a working photographer, I love using flash. I like using flash. You can see I've got some flash bits and pieces here, but I really need to be able to control that flash. On most brands of camera in fully automatic, I can't decide for the camera pretty much when it's gonna start popping up or not. A lot of the time, if you shoot indoors or at night, that flash is gonna repeatedly pop up, even if you push it down, even if you try to put your finger on top of it, which is never a good idea, by the way, that flash will still often try and pop up inside or out. And when you look at the results, the nearest person um, to the flash unit gets bleached out bright white. You can often get that horrible red eye. Everything else in a picture generally goes too dark and gloomy. It's a real disaster. In fully automatic, again, on most brands of camera, your camera's gonna decide whether or not flash is gonna pop up or not. And most of the time, those results are horrible. As I said to you, we love using flash as photographers. You should really start exploring flash, but you need to be able to control it. And, and you're talking about one of those sort of flash units that you can slide into the top of this unit here. It's called a hot shoe, but if you can get one of those units that slides in here, you get lots more control. I've got a video coming along on that, um, so stay tuned. Okay, the third point of what's wrong with fully automatic. When you start out in photography, you end up with an awful lot of pictures that are blurry. Sometimes you might think it's camera shake. Sometimes you might think the camera's just not focusing properly. Um, often you might be blaming yourself and it can put you off photography. The chances are fully automatic is to blame. If you get hold of your camera and you start pointing it around, looking through it, either look through the viewfinder if you've got a digital SLR or look on the large screen on the back, Point your camera at stuff, hold your finger down, have a good look through there, and you'll probably notice a series of little dots or squares that might just suddenly appear and then disappear. They might hang around, they might be jumping around, and they'll certainly be jumping around when you point your camera to something different. With a smaller compact camera, if I turn it on and I start pointing it around at different bits and pieces, I start getting yellow boxes that jump around. Don't know if you can see that very clearly, but as I point it around at different things, I get a series of yellow boxes that are jumping all around the screen. It's the same thing. Basically, in fully automatic, your camera is deciding what it wants to focus on. It is following a pattern, and normally, 
The pattern it's following is your camera's got lots of little focusing points. All of them are actively looking for something to focus on and your camera will decide to focus on whatever is the nearest object. Those little dots or squares or boxes, if they're appearing on your camera, they are indicating for you what is the nearest object that the camera has found and that's what the camera's gonna focus on. Now that's brilliant if you wanna take a picture of the nearest object. If you don't, it's a disaster. Let's think about that. If I took my dog to the park and I was getting some nice pictures of him running around through the fields, chances are actually fully automatic will do a half decent job for me. But the minute we go into a wooded area, for example, where there's lots of trees and my dog's running around between the trees, I'm probably gonna get a lot more failures, mainly because my camera's gonna start finding the nearest object, which may well be a tree rather than the dog. That's what the camera focuses on and I've got a big problem. Imagine you're a wedding photographer. Yep, and you decide to go for a really romantic picture, put the bride and groom the other side of a nice archway and get some romantic pictures. You can imagine what's gonna happen in fully automatic. I'm gonna get lots of pictures of a nice sharp arch, but my subjects, that bride and groom, they could easily start coming out a bit blurry. So when you're shooting fully automatic, you've gotta be careful. If you're outside in an open area, there's nothing between you and the subject, you can get some good results. But if there's a chance that anything else could get between you and the subject that you're interested in, again, it's a disaster. Let me just summarize for you. What have we learned today? Fully automatic, it's got three major problems on most brands of camera. There's always exceptions, but generally you're finding the same three problems. Number one, most of your key controls are disabled. Number two, flash will often fire off, especially if you don't want it to, tends to be the way, and there's not a lot you can do about that. And finally, the third point is your camera will be focusing on the nearest object, whether or not that's what you want it to. So you're not really in charge of what you're aiming at, how it's gonna look. I think you can agree that's a pretty big problem. Now, if you are stuck on fully automatic, but you can now see the error of your ways, then I've got a suggestion for you. Try shooting in a different mode. The mode I would suggest for you is on this twisty dial, and it's called P for program. So you're looking for the letter P. If you've got a compact or a smaller camera, then don't panic. You should still be able to deal with that. If I come into the menu option here and come into the shooting mode, guess what? I've got a P for program mode there as well. Give it a try, see how you get on. Why program mode is better for you? Let me try and answer that. If you're shooting program mode, your flash should not be going off unless you strictly tell the camera to do so. I can't think why you'd want to do that. Not only that, you can now take control of your focusing. Let me show you on the back of this camera. Previously, when I tried to press a couple of these buttons, but especially this one here, my camera told me to go away. Now I'm in program mode. If I press this button, I can now see those focusing points, the little dots that appeared through my viewfinder. And not only that, I can now, oops, it's gone off again. If I press that button again, now I can decide which one of those focusing points I wanna have active, and I only want one. And by putting it on the center one, that's certainly what I'd recommend. Let me try and do that, there we go. Now, when I take control of my camera, I point it at a subject and look through the viewfinder. When I hold my finger down, I get just a single point flash. And I make sure that single little dot is on the subject that I'm interested in. I guarantee that way that my subject's gonna come out nice and sharp. Now, one last tip. If you're gonna give program mode a try, please try practicing outdoors on a reasonably bright day. Your camera is always gonna struggle if you're shooting indoors or at night. It's dark, it's gloomy, there's not much light around and you'll find your camera starts slowing up and sounding a bit clunky. Practice shooting outdoors on reasonably bright days every time you get a chance. Now, obviously you're gonna to wanna to shoot indoors. Obviously you're gonna to wanna to take some pictures at night. Don't panic, I've got a video coming along that's gonna help you with that, so please uh, look out for that one. In the meantime, can I ask you to subscribe to my channel Give me a thumbs up. More than that though, what would be really useful is I'm trying to produce lots of videos to help answer all of your photography questions. Leave me a comment below with one of your questions in. Let me know exactly what you'd like me to cover in future videos. I'm gonna be looking at shooting indoors, shooting at night, dealing with camera shake, how to take landscape pictures, portrait pictures, sports pictures, editing videos, you name it, I'll try and cover it. So just to finish, please subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up and let me know with a comment the sort of content you'd like